Hello racers and welcome back to this tuning and setup tutorial series for Project Cars 3. For anyone who hasn't already, please make sure to check out parts 1, 2 and 3 of this tuning tutorial series where you can learn how to fine tune brakes, camber, tow, ride height and springs. In part 4 I will explain how dampers work, what they do and how you should tune them inside Project Cars 3 and other racing games in general. Before we begin, please hit the like button to support this series as this will recommend the video out to fellow racers and it means a lot to me. First off, what are dampers? Dampers are made up of pistons that sit inside of small cylinders filled with oil. They sit next to each suspension spring in a car and act as a buffer to either slow down or speed up the movement of the springs whilst going over bumps, braking, accelerating and turning. To put it simply, adjusting the springs will determine how far the springs can squeeze before bouncing back to the normal state under load. Adjusting dampers will determine how fast the springs actually move, or better said, react to these very inputs on the road. This is mainly for helping the car handle itself better over big curves and bumps, as you need the springs to compress and rebound at an optimal speed to maintain steady contact with the road whilst going over the bumps, the curbs and chicanes. For both the bumping and rebound damping settings, the lower value that you give them, the less resistance they will give against spring movement. For bump damping as an example, having a low damping value allows the spring to compress as fast as possible, with very little resistance. With this in mind, rather than thinking about the damping setup as numbers, you can approach it as one end meaning fast and the other end meaning slow. Experiment on a track with bumpy surfaces to see what values on the front and back dampers help in keeping the tyres on the road at all times. You may notice that if the bump dampers are set too high or stiff, resulting in slow movement, the car can almost catapult off of big bumps or curves. This is because the springs are taking too long to compress as you encounter the bump, so the wheels are too slow to move up and over the bump. Instead, they just crash into it, taking a lot of energy, and then ping the whole car off quite harshly. Base setup and general rules. A common rule of thumb is to always have the bump dampers to be set at a lower value than the rebound dampers. This allows wheels to quickly tuck into the car whilst encountering bumps, but return to their normal state at a slightly slower pace to match the reduced speed of the car after hitting the bumps. A safe place to start is that whatever you set the bump damping to, set the rebound damping at least 50% higher or stiffer. From here, you can see if the car can tolerate having softer or stiffer settings. The smoother the road surface on each track, then the greater the difference you can have between the bump damping and the rebound damping. Next, tuning bump dampers to help in cornering. Making the front bump damping lower, i.e. faster to move, than the rear bump damping can also help if you want the front springs of the car to dip down faster to create more oversteer as the car decelerates. This can help with cars that understeer a bit too much whilst you brake and begin turning into corners. However, setting the rear bump damping lower than the front is usually a final resort to do the opposite and it can help cars to oversteer too much going into corners, as the front bump damper will resist any spring compression on the front tyres more than what's going to be compressed on the rear spring and rear tyres. This leaves more weight to sit on the rear tyres while slowing down the car. Tuning rebound dampers to help cornering. So we now know that bump damping can work similar to springs and anti-roll bars like I've shown in past videos, whereby a softer front damping compared to a stiffer rear can help in producing more turning and oversteer. For rebound dampers though, it works the opposite the way around. Rebound damping is all about how slowly or quickly a spring spring will actually bounce back to its original state, which usually happens after you have finished braking. Rebound damping matters most when you are in the turn and exiting the corner, because whichever end of the car has the softer rebound damping, that is the end where the weight will bounce back up and off of the wheels the fastest. Let me explain in a bit more detail. 
Once you have finished braking and entered a turn, most of the car's weight will be sitting on the front tyres due to the car's body trying to resist the energy of momentum it has accumulated whilst accelerating. In short, you've been travelling fast, now you're braking down, so all the weight of the car is shifting forwards onto the front tyres. So, the weight is on the front tyres and the front springs are more compressed than the rear springs. This means more traction is available on them wheels to do the turning. If you want to keep more weight on the front tyres for the turning, we need to slow down how long it takes for the front springs to decompress, as this will delay the weight from shifting off of the front tyres and to the rear tyres. So to slow down this action and keep the springs compressed, we slow down the front rebound dampers by giving it a slightly higher, i.e. stiffer setting compared to the rear rebound dampers. If you want to achieve the opposite result, to move weight to the rear tyres faster, we just set the rebound dampers the opposite way around. A faster, softer front rebound and a slower, stiffer rear rebound. I know this can feel confusing to most people and even I need to revise notes from time to time. But soon enough this concept of setting up dampers and rebound dampers for each car will feel simple and you can enjoy having a smoother ride on the track. As I said in my previous tuning tutorials, there can be times where a car at its very limit will always feel a little bit unstable. But now you can diagnose each car to make it as comfortable as possible for your driving style so that you can race, race cleanly, race fast and race consistently. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if it helps you or entertains you and tell me in the comments below what your favourite car is to tune and race. I don't have a favourite yet but I'm sure to find out in upcoming videos and I will share it with you. If you need help with perfecting a setup just ask below like some people have and I will answer back in the comments and I may even make a video to cover it in greater detail. The next tune-in tutorial will cover differentials so be subscribed so you do not miss out on that. Thanks for watching racers, see you in the next video.